Hi all, let's have a look at the amazing game 18 of the 20 games sent to me recently by Deep Mind. So let's have a look. In this game 18, Stockfish was playing white, and the book moves, this is under TSEC conditions, the book moves are given as the Royal of Pairs and the early exchange variation. So not a delayed one, but just straight away taking on C6. Uh, so the Royal of Pairs exchange variation. This is all book, 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 and more book until here, black castles, queenside, and this is the end of the book here. So Stockfish 8 decides now it's best to take on E5. We have F takes E5, H3. The bishop goes to D7 here. Now B4, so white's play is pretty clear with the king on c8 try and just blast through basically sometimes this kind of thing fisher had a very quick win in the exchange variation which is uh, actually on the channel video annotated on the channel you might want to check that out i might put a link okay so it's quite a dangerous variation sometimes so um knight f6 was played queen b3 and now alpha zero tries to give itself a fighting chance instead of just being slaughtered on the queen side with this pawn sack g5 so trying to create an open road to white's king bishop takes g5 rook dg8 so what an exciting game opposite side castling king h1 is played rook g6 black is preparing to double the rooks rook g1 bishop e6 c4 the rooks double so hitting the bishop the bishop retreats queen f8 so this gives the bishop e7, and also the queen can bounce sometimes to g7 or h6. Queen e3, with the idea of lunging in, actually, with queen a7, that's quite dangerous. Especially in conjunction with c5, maybe later. Uh, we have c5 stopping that. So as an example here, queen g7, the queen can plunge in. doesn't matter about g2, it's not decisive taking on g2. Uh, so say king d7, c5. And here, uh, knight takes e5 check, actually. That's a, a weakness of the last move of the bishop not holding e5, and that's collapsing for black. So uh, queen a7 is dangerous, very dangerous. So c5 was played here to stop that. Rook a c1, b6, and now b5, knight h5. B takes a6, so alpha zero just sacrificing a pawn to try and keep the pawn structure more solid. Queen g7, and now g3, so offering h3 and trying to neutralize black's heavy pieces on that g file. Are they just sitting there for nothing now? Alpha zero uh, takes on h3. A4, Stockfish is trying to open up lines again. King b8, a5. This looks pre pretty dangerous on the queen side, and nothing's happening on the king side. It seems like four knocks here. Is alpha zero in trouble? Bishop c8. Uh, on b takes a5. This is a little bit too dangerous of the check. a7. White can, in fact, go for queen b8 to just queen a pawn over here. That whole area is not very well protected, so a8 on the cards there without penalty so that's that's some of the dangers here on the queen side so bishop c8 uh, we have rook g2 king a7 rook h2 so sometimes this knight could be a tactical liability bishop g4 queen d3 sometimes queen d5 will be useful here yeah. queen f7 eyeing d5 looking at f3 rook c3 protecting f3 a bit more B takes now, rook b3. A4. It's very, very complex. Check. King takes, rook b1. Queen e8. We have bishop g5. Very, very interesting indeed. Trying to lure a rook to g5 because this looks like some sort of sacrifice. But it's ignored. Knight f6 is played. If rook takes g5 here, then knight takes. With a rook there, queen d5 is now effective threatening queen b7 on queen c8 there's check 
and then rook a1. This position is desperate for black. It seems if black has to give up a piece like that. Here, the queen lunges in, and in fact, h5 is dropping off now. There's no there's no place for the knight. The knight's being checkmated <laughs> here, amusingly. Yeah, white's ending up with a big advantage, just taking that knight. So uh, knight f6 was played, not being tempted by the bishop on g5. That's taken, and we're getting a scenario with uh, an interesting imbalance, actually, two knights against the two bishops. But it's a pretty close position. In fact, Alpha Zero's pawn structure is a little bit diced if you look at these pawns. They're very, very diced. Uh, we have Queen C3 with ideas of, for example, Rook B5 and Queen A5 checkmate. Bishop F8, Rook B5 threatening checkmate in one. Now Rook B7 shielding, sorry, Rook B6 shielding the king. So King B7 is now possible on Queen A5. Queen a3, we have bishop d7, check, taking the pawn with check, taking the rook, check, queen c2, h5, we have king g2, bishop g7, rook h1, queen f7, knight h4, these knights seem to have good entrenchment places, like f5 for the, for example for that one. Bishop c6 putting pressure on e4. Knight df3. Rook d8. Knight f5. Bishop f6. Knight e3. That d5 looks great, but queen g6 creating two kinds of potential pins against the queen and the crossfire. Very interesting scenario. However, white plays here with the pressure on e4. It's a critical position tactically. White plays knight d5. You might be wondering why for a moment. Let's look at knight d2. Black just plays. Can you guess if I give you five seconds? Black to play. Alpha zero would have in this position. Rook takes d2, just crashing through the diagonal and winning the rook on h1, crushing. So white has to give up a pawn. Now, how does black want to win this pawn? I, unless that knight wants to be tolerated, which it looks no bad bad idea to tolerate the knight. It's hitting b6. It's hitting all sorts. So which way to take this knight? Alpha zero chooses rook takes d5 in exchange sack. On bishop takes d5. This way, uh, there's rook a1, and it seems here, although white is a pawn down, black's king is in severe trouble. For example, like this, queen a2, check, b6 is in a big target. So for example, like this, f3 consolidating, and now this other knight comes to d5, that massive hole on d5 without any challenge. It's a huge position. So that has to be avoided. So this exchange sack keeps black's game alive, basically with the bishop pair. So even though the exchange down, it's for a pawn. So interesting imbalances again. Knight d2, bishop goes back. Queen a2, offering e4 here. This is crazy stuff, isn't it? Bishop g5 was played. On taking the pawn, winning the pawn, after f3, even though white is two pawns down for the exchange, this scenario is very favorable getting one pawn back it's going to be a clear advantage for white so uh, it's not advisable to win that pawn so we have bishop g5 instead f3 which uh, okay after bishop f4 there's knight f1 b5 so interesting two connected pass pawns here bishop pair queen b2 we have c4 king f2 unpinning threatening g takes the bishop moves now winning this pawn. Very, very interesting position. So equal on pawns, but white's the exchange up. But these two connected pass pawns look quite mobile, potentially. Bishop d8, king e2. The king doesn't look entirely safe as well, the white king. h4. Now, in fact, this is ignored, this offering of a pawn. We have g4. 
Uh, so keeping the pawns together, white wants also to use these connected pawns, it seems. Queen g5. The queen's come off. Bishop takes. So the exchange up, but with both sides having connected past pawns. Knight e3. King b6. Rook d1. King c5. Knight d5. b4. f4. Things are getting really interesting. These pawns are rolling down. There's a passed pawn here as well, though. f5, c3, f6, bishop e8, trying to put the blockade on white's pawns. King d3, check, king c4, check, g6. So Stockfish's pawns all of a sudden, they look pretty dangerous as well as being the exchange up. Can black really survive this? c2 rook e1 bishop e8 yes a very very interesting scenario g7 check we have now bishop f7 e5 bishop f2 rook e2 bishop g3 with a big idea of bishop f4 check and queening we have rook e4 stopping bishop f4 so for example on e6 Bishop f4 check, Bishop g6 check. This is just uh, better for black, actually. Black gets in the checks and the queen first to checkmate white. So rook e4 is important. We have h3, e6, the battle of past pawns here. h2, yeah, on bishop takes e6, it seems rook takes check. It seems as though white even though queening a bit later is doing fine here there's nothing much for black to do there big advantage for white so h2 check king goes to b2 knight c4 check here yeah, rook b3 check and now e takes f7 alpha zero is queening king takes c2 so eliminating this queening threat with check 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 and uh, we're set for a lot of checks now queen d5 check but these pawns look as though they want a queen check taking out one of the pawns but now rook takes b4 bishop g5 knight g4 even though black has the queen those pawns are keeping the queen pretty tame here and in fact yeah this is very very tricky to win this with the queen you might you might be on the side of the queen or you might be on the side of white with the past pawns here but it looks as though this position is very very difficult to gain an advantage here yeah, there's an interesting moment now knight e5 we have uh, queen e8 rook e4 Okay, the king comes up a bit. Knight e3, we have the queen f7, rook e7. Taking with check, king g4. Now, the queen can't take on e7 because of knight d5 check, winning the queen and the game. So we have queen g6, knight d5 check. Knight f4. Bishop takes. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> tricky for the pawn queening. Uh, yeah, so black takes on f4. And now it looks to be a theoretical draw, in fact. This is uh, looks like a table-based draw. And there's another 80 moves here <laughs> before the draw was agreed, actually. Uh, so yeah, Alpha Zero trying to get something with the Queen, but let's fast forward this. It's not going anywhere. It's a virtual fortress. There was a big discussion about this. Well, I, I raised the discussion on the Leela forums about virtual fortresses uh, being an issue with uh, Leela. It seems on the, uh, especially the earlier networks. Uh, okay, here. Uh, 
yeah, we have this moment here now where quinning and it carries on on after this, believe it or not, instead of just agreeing a draw, it carried on quite a bit. Instead of agreeing a draw. Uh yeah, it was thought that virtual fortresses either like opposite colour bishop blockading scenarios or blockading scenarios in, uh, which just fortresses in general or perpetual check scenarios both sort of instances of what I would call a virtual fortress which it seemed as though Leela uh, was kind of oblivious to so was often drawing games even with much weaker engines in theory uh, but that kind of issue has been addressed uh, with the later versions of Leela and in fact there's even a toggle now on tournament mode uh, to avoid simplification as well uh, so there's all sorts of things, table-based rescoring, there's all sorts of things going into the Leela project. But yeah, the great Alpha Zero here does seem to... Um, so it wasn't winning all the games, and this is one of the gritty draws, 212 moves. It was it was actually drawn here after King E5. One of the very gritty long games. What are the five or more key points we can get from this game? From my perspective, it shows both sides in the opposite car castling, opposite side castling scenario are prepared to play very energetically to open up lines against their opponent's kings. Uh, there's all sorts of dynamic imbalances expressed in this game. The most emphatic was the two bishops versus the two knights. Uh, so Stockfish having the two knights. Uh, but once that moment, one of, one of the bishops was about to be taken out, uh, in fact, Alpha Zero sacrificed the exchange to maintain the bishop pair, as if it really does understand that the bishop pair is worth a lot more than the single bishop, especially when there's the possibility of a blind square like uh, d5 when, the, when there's a dark square bishop. That's going to be a fully entrenched single knight. So that transition period from the two knights versus the two bishops to a single knight versus the bishop was avoided Alpha Zero carrying on the spirit of true like dynamic peace cooperation, keeping the bishop pair and trying to use its past pawns. And so did Stockfish. Stockfish avoided G takes H4, try to use its connected past pawns. So both aware of the power of connected past pawns. So we see, even though it's a in theory a very technical engine game, some of the expressions here about our understanding of the pieces that you know past pawns need to be connected bishop pair is, is really valuable to watch each other's back on the squares that transitioning uh, to um, more clear-cut scenarios was avoided it seems by both sides keeping the true you know dynamic potential uh, alive and the result a draw a very hard fought draw here great stuff Okay, I hope you enjoyed this game video. Uh, if you did, click, please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessmold.net to play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis in advance from the improved menu learned from the masters, uh, the uh, the YouTube order button there. Okay, um, comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. All really appreciated. And also the new Teespring store in the description. Thanks very much.